Hello people. Welcome to Career Deed. In today's session, we are going to discuss some of the previous year's CTS aptitude model questions. So these kind of questions are highly repetitive in Cognizant. So I have included such kind of question which carries high weightage. So don't skip any part and watch the video till the end. And I have included the previous session link in description. And if you haven't watched, please have a look at it. And you have the past question here. Your school has 963 students appearing for 10th and 12th board exams. Each section in the school has the same number of students. The number of sections on 10th and 12th classes can be. So in this school, we have 963 students. And these people are from 10th standard and 12th standard. And this 10th standard and 12th standard have some classes. That means we can take it as sections like A, B, C right and they are asking what could be the total number of sections and we know the answer perfectly lies in factoring 963 right so we can write the number 963 in following ways so it is 900 and yeah it is 963 so we can write this number 963 as 3 into 321 Right, so 3 into 321 is 963. Now we can again factorize 321 like this. See, 3 into 107 is 321. So what is the factor of number 963? That is 3 into 3 into 107, right? So 3 into 3 into 107 is nothing but 963. So this is the factor of number 963. Now, if you have any of the number in this factorization in option, you can choose that. So you have 3 into 3, right? So 3 into 3, you get 9. So totally that could be 9 sections. And in each section, you can have 107 students. So 9 into 107, you get 963. R. You can have, uh, let's say you can have three sections, only three sections, right? So three into 107, you get 321. So three sections and in each section you have 321. This is also possible, right? Or uh, imagine you have 107, uh, 107 sections and in each section you have three into three, nine. Right, so this is also possible, right? So they are asking the number of sections on 10th and 12th classes that can be possible, right? So you have to look at the factor which is possible for 963. So you have 3 into 3, 9, right? So look at first option, you have 3 into 3, 9. So you have 9 sections and in each section you have 107 students. So logically answer for this question is option 9. So uh, option B is not possible, right? Because you have 6, but you don't have 2 here right and 12 also so you don't have two and you don't have the number seven in this uh, factorization so definitely you have to go with option e so these kind of questions are very very important so you have to use the concept called factoring okay now moving to next question aburva can complete a job in 12 days and her sister can complete a job in 15 days how long will they take to complete the job if they work together? So this question is based on time and work and definitely you can expect at least a two question from time and work. So Apurva can complete a job in 12 days, right? So Apurva, so we can name Apurva as A. So Apurva can complete the job in 12 days, whereas her sister can complete the job in 15 days. Okay. So this is time taken by Apurva and her sister. We don't know what is the total job, right? So what we have to do, if we don't know what is the total job they are doing, we can take LCM, right? So what is the LCM of 12 and 15? So LCM of 12 and 15 is 60, right? So 60 is the total work to be completed. So Apurva will complete the 60 units in 12 days. So in one day, Apurva will complete how many units? 60 by 12, five units. Right, so Apurva's APCNC is five units per day. Now, if you take her sister, she will complete the 60 units in 15 days. So in one day, she could complete how many units? 60 by 15, four units per day, right? So this is APCNC of her sister. Now, our question is how long will they take to complete the job if they work together? So if they work together in single day, they could complete how many units? Five plus four, nine units they could complete. So what is the total work to be completed? 60 units. What is the work they could do in one day? Nine units per day. So it is 60 units divided by nine. So if you cancel this, you get 20 by three. So most of the time we uh, use it to write the answer in mixed fractions. So here you have the answer in mixed fractions, right? So we can convert this proper, I mean, proper fraction, I mean, improper fraction into mixed fraction. So it is actually proper fraction. So it is 20 by three. So six threes are 18. 
you have the remainder two. Now you have to write the six here. Three will come to bottom and two will come to top. So it is six two by three days. So this becomes your answer. So answer for this question is option B, right? Okay, now moving to next question. So again, this question is based on time and work. So Abhinaya can do one fifth of the work in 20 days, while Badrinath can do 20% of the work in 30 days. How long will it take for both of them to complete the work? See, Abhinaya can do one fifth of the work in 20 days. So what is one fifth? It is 20%. We know one fifth is 20%, right? So Abhinaya will do one fifth of the work in 20 days. That means she could complete the whole work in how many days? So just multiply this. So five into 20, you get 100 days. So this is one fifth of the work. The whole work is nothing but one, right? So one, or you can take a variable, right? So one fifth of the work. So you can take the work as X. So C will complete one fifth of the work X in 20 days. So C will complete that one X work in how many days? Five into 20, 100 days, right? Similarly, if you take Badrinath, so C, he can do 20% of the work in 30 days. Then he will do 100% of the work in how many days? See, 20 into 5 is 100. Similarly, 30 into 5 is 150. So, Badrinath will do the 100% of work in 150 days. Now, they are asking if they work together, they will complete the whole job in how many days? So, it is similar to our previous question now. So, Abhinaya can complete the whole job in 100 days, whereas Badrinath will complete the whole job in 150 days. Now we don't know what is the total work, right? So we can take the LCM of 100 and 150. What is the LCM of 100 and 150? 300, right? So 300 is the LCM of 100 and 150. We people know how to find LCM easily, right? So we know the shortcut, right? So if you don't know, I'm including the link in the description, please have a look at it, right? So finding LCM and HCF is very, very important, not only for CDS, but for all competitive exams, right? So the total 300 units will be completed by Abhinaya in 100 days. So in one day, Abhinaya will complete how many units? 300 by 100, that is three units per day, as well as Badrinath will complete how many units in one day? 300 by 150. That is two units per day. Now, if they join together, they will complete uh, how many units in one day? Three plus two, five units per day. So in one day, Abhinaya and Badrinath will complete five units. So totally, they have to complete 300 units. If they work together, they will complete these 300 units in how many days? So 300 units need to be completed and they will complete five units per day. So units, units cancel. And if you cancel this, you get 60 days. So this becomes your answer. So in 60 days, they will complete the whole job if they work together. Hope you understood the question. Now, moving to next question. Yes, given that the interest is only earned on the principal, if an investment of rupees 1000 amounts to rupees 1210 in two years, then what is the rate of interest open? So this question is based on interest calculation. Okay, now here the question, you might get a confusion whether it is a simple interest or compound interest. Okay, now you have 1000 rupees and you are getting 1210 rupees at the end of two years. So it is clearly given interest is only earned on the principal. Interest is only earned on the principal means from principal you will get the interest. So this will happen only in simple interest, right? Imagine if you deposited 100 rupees and every year you get a 20%, right? So that means first year you will get a 20 rupees, right? So 20% of 100 is 20 rupees. Second year you will get another 20 rupees. Third year you will get another 20 rupees. That means for this 100 rupees, you get 20, 20, 20 rupees every year. So you will get interest on the principal every year, but in compound interest, the case is different, right? Okay, now you deposited 1000 rupees and this 1000 rupees becomes 1210 rupees in how many years? Two years, right? So in two years, how many rupees increased? 210 rupees increased. So this 210 rupees is nothing but simple interest. So this happened in how many years? Two years. So in two years, 210 rupees increased. So in one year, how many rupees then increased? 210 divided by two. So if you cancel this, you get 105. So you are getting 105 rupees interest per the thousand rupees. Now this 105 is how many percentage of thousand? Because for the thousand only you are getting that 105 rupees, right? So this 105 is how many percentage of that thousand? So this is your question. 
right so if you cancel this you get 105 by 10 that is 10.5 percentage so your rate of interest is 10.5 percentage so this becomes your answer okay imagine if you get the same question as compound interest imagine uh, your question is uh, for the investment 1000 rupees uh, this investment 1000 amounts to 1210 rupees compounded annually so if it compound annually you have to find the compound interest right right so you invested a thousand rupees and this thousand rupees becomes thousand two hundred and ten at the end of two years compounded annually you have to find the rate of interest how you will find so this thousand rupees is hundred percent now so every year since you don't know what is rate of interest every year our percentage will increase so this is hundred percent from this and our percentage will increase so hundred plus r by hundred why it is hundred by r by hundred because imagine if it is 20 percentage interest so how you will write so 1000 into 120 by 100 so this is how you will write right so from this uh, 100 percentage a 20 percentage increased so you will write it as 120 by 100 right so i am including the link of simple and compound interest also in description if you don't know so it is a, it is an amazing circuit so you can learn from the uh, link now here it is 100 plus r by 100 because every year r percentage is increasing right Likewise, it is increasing for how many years? Two years, right? So you can write it as power two. That means 1000 into 100 plus R by 100 into 100 plus R by 100. So instead of writing for two times, we are writing it as 100 plus R by 100 to the whole power two. So this will become how many rupees? 1210 rupees. So this is the total amount, right? So in both the cases, this is the total amount. So you can write 100 plus R divided by 100 the whole square equal to 1210 divided by 1000 so you can cancel 0 and 0 and if you take this square to right hand side this becomes square root of 121 and square root of 100 so you get 100 plus r by 100 equal into 11 by 10 so cancel 0 and 0 now you are left with only 10 so if you multiply this 10 to 11 you get 110 so i am writing here because i don't have space so it is 100 plus r equivalent to 100 into 10 is 110. So the rate of interest will be 110 minus 100, you get 10. So rate of interest will be 10%. So this will work in the case of compound interest. But for this question, answer is what? 10.5 percentage only. That is option B. So to explain that compound interest, I work like this. But our answer is 10.5 percentage for this question. So when it comes to compound interest, you have to work like this. Okay. Now moving to next question. What is X? in 0 0.169 by x square equal to 10. So this question is based on certs and indices. So this type of questions are very popular. You can easily score mark here, right? So it is 0 0.169 divided by x square equivalent to 10. Now you can write x square equivalent to 0 0.169 divided by 10. So if we have decimal, we feel uncomfortable. So what we can do, we can multiply both numerator and denominator by 1000 so that this numerator will become 169 and denominator will become 10 into 1000, 10,000. So x square equal to square root of 160, I mean x equal to square root of 169 divided by 10,000. That is nothing but 13 square is 169. So you can write 13 at top and 100 square is 10,000. So you can write 100 at bottom. So what is 13 by 10? You get 0 0.13, right? So this will become your answer right so again this kind of questions are very popular you can easily score marks right so prepare well now moving to next what will be the value of log 1.728 when it is known that log 7 and log 2 log 3 log 5 value is given so how we can write log 1.728 so always convert the decimal to fractions that will be easy for you so log of 1.728 can be written as 1728 divided by 1000 because you have uh, three numbers after this decimal place. So you can multiply the numerator and denominator by 1000. So you get log of 1728 divided by 1000. Now you can write this one as log of 12 cube by 10 cube, right? So 12 cube is nothing but 1728. So please keep at least a 20 cube in your mind. It is very important. So 12 cube is 1728 and 10 cube is 1000. We know that it is very easy, right? And you can write this 1728 by 1000 as 12 cube by 10 cube. That is nothing but 12 by 10 to the whole power 3, right? 
So you can write this 1728 by 1000 is 12 by 10 to the whole power 3. Right. So you can take these three to the front of log. Right. So it is 3 log. Now you can cancel this 12 and 10. Right. So if you cancel this 12 and 10, you get 6 by 5. Right. So that is nothing but log of 6 minus log of 5. Now, why it is log of 6 minus log of 5? Because we know log A by B is nothing but log A minus log B. Right. So we are writing it as log 6 minus log 5. Now you can write 3 into log of 3. 6 can be written as 2 into 3 minus log 5. Now log A into B can be written as log A plus log B. Right. So log A into B can be written as log A plus log B. Now you have log 2 into 3. So you can write it as log 2 plus log 3 minus log 5. Now, what is log 2? We know log 2 is 0 0.3010. So 3 into 0 0.3010 plus what is log 3 value? It is 0 0.4771 minus log 5 value is 0 0.698. Now you have to add this and subtract this. So 0 0.3010 plus 0 0.4771 is equivalent to 0 0.77. Uh, what is that? 81. Am I right? Yes. So it is 0 0.3010 plus 0 0.4771. When you add it, you get 0 0.7781. Now you have to subtract this 0 0.698, right? Okay. Now if you subtract this, you get 1, 0, and this is 8, 0. So it is 0 0.0801. So 3 into 0 0.0801. Just multiply this, you get 30240. So it is 0 0.2403. Now you have option D that is 0 0.237. That is the closest approximation, right? So we are making the closest approximation for log 1.728. So in most of the cases, you will be getting only the nearest value, right? So it is 0 0.237 and this becomes your answer. So this kind of question are also very popular. Now we go to next model. Yes, your machine takes 40 minutes to produce 20 boxes. Another machine of the same specification takes 0 0.5 hours to produce the same number of boxes. If both the machines are used at the same time, then how much time will it take to manufacture 70 boxes? Okay, so this question is based on time and work again. Now we can easily solve this problem, right? So we don't want to use traditional method. So it's completely shortcut. Your machine takes 40 minutes to produce 20 boxes. So we can keep the first machine, right? So we can keep it as machine one or a machine, anything, right? So this first machine will take 40 minutes. Now, another machine of the same specification takes 0 0.5 hours. So what is 0 0.5 hours? It is half an hour. Half an hour means 30 minutes, right? So second machine will take 30 minutes to produce the same number of boxes, right? So we can say time ratio is four is to three ratio of time taken by machine one and machine two to produce the same boxes is four is to three. Then what will be their efficiency ratio? So their efficiency will be three is to four, right? We know time is inversely proportional to efficiency when both of them are doing the same job. So here, both the machines are producing same 20 boxes, right? So work is same. So we can say time is inverse to efficiency, right? Now, you want to find if both the machines are used at the same time, then how much time will it take to manufacture 70 boxes? Now you have to find if both are used together and how much time it will uh, produce that 70 boxes. Now you can take machine one or machine two and compare with the efficiency of both the machines. So for my convenience, what I'm doing, I'm taking the first machine. So efficiency of first machine is three parts. So with this three parts efficiency, so this is efficiency, right? So efficiency of first machine is three parts and the second machine is four parts. So with this three parts efficiency, first machine will produce 20 boxes in 40 minutes. 20 boxes in 40 minutes. Now this is efficiency of first machine. Now if you take both the machines, first machine and second machine, both of them will produce, I mean, both the uh, efficiency of both the machines are three plus four, seven parts, right? So with the seven parts, it will produce 70 boxes in how many minutes? So this is our question, right? So simply cancel this. You can cancel this X, X, seven, and uh, the 70 is 10 times. And you can cancel this zero and this for two times. And if you cancel this two, 
and 40 for 20 times. So question mark equal to 3 into 20. What is 3 into 20? 60 minutes, right? So question mark is nothing but minutes, right? So 60 minutes is nothing but one hour. Now you might get it out. So why you perform like this? So this is nothing but the structure of M1 men working for D1 days. Each day they are working for H1 hours to complete W1 unit of work which is equivalent to M2 number of men working for D2 days. Each day they are working for H2 hours to complete W2 units of work. So we are applying uh, the efficiency in this formula and I have explained this formula in our time and work uh, session, right? And again, I'm inclu including the link in description. If you want, you can have a look at it. Okay, now we shall go to next question. So 20 men, 20 men can do a job in 10 days, working eight hours a day. If women are working 33.33% more efficient than men, how many women will it take to finish the same job in 10 days working 6 hours a day? And again, this problem belongs to the previous model, right? So how can we solve? So 20 men can do a job in 10 days working 8 hours a day. If women are working 33.33% more efficient than men, so it is given women is 33.33% more efficient than men. So if men do one part, right? So if men works 100%, women will work 100 plus 33.33%, right? So if men work one part, women will work one plus one by three. Why it is one plus one by three? Because women will do 33.33% more work than men, right? So what is one plus one by three? You get three into one, three. Three plus one is four by three. So, uh, ratio is 1 is to 4 by 3. So men and women ratio is four, uh, 1 is to 4 by 3. Now you can uh, take this 3 to men. That will be 3 is to 4. Or simply we can say 1 is to 4 by 3. So you can multiply this by 3 and this one by 3. So, okay. So 3, 3 get cancelled. So you can say the efficiency ratio is 3 is to 4. So male and female work in the ratio 3 is to 4. So this is their efficiency ratio. I believe you got it. Okay, now our question is 20 men can do a job in 10 days working 8 hours a day. Now, how many women will take to finish the same job in 10 days working 6 hours a day? Okay, now we can uh, check with the efficiency. See, 20 men will work for 10 days each day they are working for eight hours to complete a job how many women will take to finish the same job right so how many women we don't know how many women so we can take it as w number of women will take 10 days to complete the same job working six hours a day now we know efficiency of male is three parts right so with this 20 multiply this three because each man efficiency is three parts. So 20 men will be 20 into three, right? Similarly, if you take women, women will be four parts efficient, right? So they are four times efficient. So with this W, just multiply this four, right? So we are just applying these values in the previous formula. Now just cancel this. You can cancel this 10 and 10. Now this four, uh, yeah, this four can be canceled. So this is five times. Now, this six can be canceled. So in second table, three times, and this is four times. And this three and three can be canceled. Now you get W equal to five into four. Yeah, you have five into four, that is 20. So these women will take, I mean, 20 women will take 10 days to complete the job, same job, right? So answer is 20 days, 20 women. They are asking how many women, right? So we kept this W as the total number of women. So we can say this 20 women will complete the same job in 10 days working six hours a day. So this becomes our answer. Hope you understood. Now we have the next question. When a bus travels at a speed of 60 km per hour, it reaches the bus stop on time. When the same bus travels at the speed of 50 km per hour, it reaches the stop 15 minutes late. What is length of the journey? So you have to find the distance. Length of the journey means you have to find the distance, right? So what is distance? Distance equal to speed into time. See, all are basic concepts only. Distance equal to speed into time. Now, first the bus travels with the speed of 60 km per hour. So first the speed is 60 km per hour. And next, it reaches the bus stop on time. So we can keep the time as T, right? So if it travels for T minutes, uh, with the speed of 60 km per hour, it will reach the bus stop by time. 
right? Because distance equal to speed into time. So we can keep uh, keep this t as t minutes. So to convert to hours, what we have to do? We have to divide this by sixty, right? Right. So with sixty kilometer per hour, it is traveling for t minutes. That means you have to convert to hours. So it is t by sixty. Now the same bus travels with the speed of fifty kilometer per hour, right? So it is fifty kilometer per hour, and it reaches the stop fifteen minutes late. That means from the usual time, it will take a fifteen minutes extra, right? So it is t plus fifteen minutes. For example, if it travels for thirty minutes, it will take a fifteen minutes extra. It is thirty plus fifteen, third forty five minutes, right? So here it is t plus fifteen minutes. Now we convert this to hours by dividing with sixty. So both are same distance, right? So in both the cases, the bus is covering same distance. So you can equate it. Now you can cancel this sixty uh, and sixty. And the zero and zero can be cancelled. Yeah, it is nothing but sixty equal to five into t five t five plus fifteen is seventy five. So you can say t equal to seventy five. So what is t equal to seventy five? So it is optimum time. So t equal to seventy five minutes means the bus will usually cover the distance in seventy five minutes. But you have to find length of the journey. That is, you have to find the distance. So what is distance? Distance equal to speed into time, right? So we know. So we can substitute uh, the value of t on the left hand side or right hand side because you have to find the distance in both the cases. Bus uh, cover the same distance, so you can substitute this value of t here. So it is sixty into. So instead of t, substitute that seventy five divided by sixty. So sixty sixty cancel. So you get seventy five kilometer. So this becomes your answer, right? So this sixty is distance and this seventy uh, five is time. So distance into time equal to speed. That is seventy five kilometer. Even you can substitute that seventy five kilometer on right hand side. You get the same answer, right? But answer for this question is seventy five kilometer. This becomes your answer, right? Okay. So that's it for today's session. And in upcoming session, I plan to uh, post more videos on cognizant. Until that, stay connected with career deed. And if you follow some other different techniques for these problems, you can put it in comment session and like the video, share it to your friends. Thanks a lot for watching, and wish you very all the best for clearing your cognizant drive. Thank you. Have a nice day.